Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to calculate higher derivatives. So let's begin. So in the last video we found the first derivative. So if y equals f of x, the first derivative is given by f primed x. So f primed x is the same as writing the gradient function dy over dx. So it doesn't matter whether you use the primed notation. Generally, primed means d by dx. So if you're differentiating with respect to x, you can use the prime notation. Uh, if you do engineering or mechanics, we also have a dot notation. Dot means differentiate with respect to t. So that is how you would work out the first derivative or the gradient function. Now, to calculate the second derivative with respect to x, so the second derivative is given by d2y over dx squared. So d2y over dx squared is the second derivative. All we do is we differentiate dy by dx again, or you can think of it as differentiating y two times. So to work out the second derivative d2y over dx squared, you can differentiate y two times, or you can differentiate dy over dx again, and that will give you f double primed x. So f double primed and d2 over dx squared is the same thing. Now moving on, the third derivative with respect to x is given by d3y by dx cubed. And d3y over dx cubed can be found by differentiating d2y over dx squared again, or by differentiating y three times. So you could also express this as f3 primed x, or y3 primed. So therefore the nth derivative with respect to x is given by dny over dx to the n. So in order to work out dny by dx to the n, think of it as differentiating y n times. So let's have an example. So with example number one, given y and y is 3 root x plus 1 squared divided by 2 root x, we need to work out dy over dx and d2 over dx squared. So let's see how this is done. Back to the paper and pen. So y is 3 root x plus 1 squared over 2 root x. Let's first calculate dy over dx. So remember in the last video, I did a couple of examples showing you how to differentiate uh, a function like this using the basic rule of differentiation. So let me remind you, I'm going to do a side calculation. Let me first expand the numerator. So let's expand out 3 root x plus 1 squared. 3 root x plus 1 squared is the same as 3 root x plus 1 times another 3 root x plus 1. So 3 root x times 3 root x is 9x. 3 root x times 1 is 3 root x or 3x to the half. So it's better to write it in the form ax to the power n because you'll be using this to differentiate later on. 1 times 3 root x is 3 root x or 3x to the half. 1 times the 1 is 1. So if I add the like terms, I have 9x. 3x to the half plus another 3x to the half is 6x to the half plus the 1. So this is what you should have when you expand the numerator. So remember to handle the fraction, so we have 3 root x plus 1 squared divided by 2 root x. So to handle this fraction, Remember the idea that we used in the previous video. We divide each of the terms in the numerator by the term in your denominator. So the term in the denominator is 2 root x or 2x to the half. So we need to divide each term in the numerator by 2x to the power half in your denominator. So let's move on from here. So we need to divide 9x by 2x to the half. We also divide the 6x to the half by 2x to the half. 
and we also divide the 1 at the end by 2x to the half. So from here on, we can simplify each term separately. So remember, we have 9 over 2 for the first term, x to the power 1 divided by x to the power half is the same as x to the power 1 minus half, which is x to the power half. So remember the rule in indices. So if we divide two terms having the same base, all we do is subtract the powers. So we're using the rule, um, one of the rules in indices that we've seen in a video. So if you haven't seen the video that I did on indices, I'll provide a link to that video in the description below. So let's carry on. So we have a plus. 6 over 2 is 3. These 2 x to the halves can be cancelled. Plus 1 over 2. 1 over x to the half is the same as x to the power minus half. So remember another rule in indices, if I have 1 over x to the power n, that is the same as writing x to the minus n. So I use this very rule to write 1 over x to the half as x to the minus half. So this is our simplified y. So y is now 9 over 2 x to the power half plus the 3 plus the half x to the power minus half. So here's our simplified y. So now we can differentiate to calculate dy over dx. So when I multiply by the power, half times 9 over 2 is 9 over 4. And if I subtract 1 from the power, half minus 1 minus half. So remember from the previous video, when we differentiate any constant, the answer is 0. So 3 is a constant. When I differentiate 3, the answer is 0. And finally, when I differentiate this term here, multiply by the power, minus half times half is minus a quarter, x to the power. Then subtract 1 from the power, minus half, minus 1, minus 3 over 2. So this should be the solution for dy over dx. So if we go back to the screenshot, so in order to work out d2y over dx squared, remember the idea, we differentiate dy over dx again, which is the same as differentiating y twice. So since we have dy over dx, let's differentiate again to work out d2y over dx squared. So let's go back to the paper and pen. So I have dy over dx, so to work out the second derivative, d2y over dx squared, let's differentiate again. So the power is minus half, so if I multiply by the power, minus half times 9 over 4 is minus 9 over 8. And if I take away 1 from the power, minus half, minus 1, minus 3 over 2. If I differentiate this term here, minus a quarter times minus 3 over 4 is plus 3 over 8 x to the power. If I subtract 1 from the power, minus 3 over 2, minus 1, minus 5 over 2. So this should be the solution for d2 over dx squared to example 1. We have another example to do. So in example number 2, f of x is 2 root x minus 1 cubed and we need to work out f primed so remember primed means we differentiate once so we need to differentiate once for f primed we also need to calculate f double primed double prime means differentiate twice and we need to calculate the value of f prime 2 and f double primed 1 so back to the paper and pen. So right, we have this function to differentiate once for f primed x. So first of all, let me expand these brackets. So to expand this bracket to the power 3, so I'm going to use this identity, a minus b cubed. a minus b cubed is the same as a cubed minus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared minus b cubed. So I'm going to use this identity 
to help me expand out this power 3 term. So by comparison, a is going to be 2 root x and b is going to be 1. So let me make a note. So a by comparison is 2 root x, b by comparison is 1. So I thought if I replace a and b by 2 root x and 1 respectively, we're going to have 2 root x minus 1 cubed, that is equal to a, which is 2 root x, don't forget the cubed, minus the 3, a, which is 2 root x, close bracket, don't forget the squared, times b, which is 1, plus the 3, a, which is 2 root x, times the b, which is 1, don't forget that squared, minus, so minus, b, which is 1, to the power 3, or cubed. So this is what you should have when you replace a and b in this identity. So this identity comes from Pascal's triangle or it comes from the binomial theorem. So you can use this identity to expand uh, a cubic uh, term quite quickly. Okay, So it's quicker in comparison to multiplying a bracket with a bracket and multiplying the outcome of the two brackets multiplied by another bracket. So it's worthwhile remembering. So let's continue. 2 cubed is 8. Root x cubed. So let's think about this. So in the corner, root x is the same as x to the power half. So x to the power half to the power 3 is the same as x to the power 3 over 2. Okay? So remember this one of the rules in indices. So if I have x to the a to the power b, that's the same as x to the a b. So I'm using this rule in order to help me uh, work out root x cubed. So x root x is the same as x to the half. x to the half cubed is x to the power 3 times half, which is uh, 3 over 2. So we're going to have 8x to the power 3 over 2 for the first term. Minus, so minus. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. Root x squared being x. Plus, so plus. 3 times 2 times 1 squared is 6 root x that is the same as x to the power half so remember it's better to write it in the form ax to the power n all of your terms because you're going to be differentiating later on and finally a minus one cubed which is one so this is your simplified f of x so now we're in a position to work out f primed so primed means differentiate once so if I differentiate the first term, 8x to the power 3 over 2, so remember the idea of differentiation, multiply by the power. So 3 over 2 times 8 is 12. So it's going to be 12x to the power. 3 over 2 minus 1, which is half. So don't forget to subtract 1 from the power as well. When I differentiate minus 12x, it's minus 12. How about for this term here? When I differentiate 6x to the half, multiply by the power, half times 6 is 3. And by subtracting 1 from the power, half minus 1 is minus half. And finally, when you differentiate a constant, the outcome is 0. So, I can write f primed x as 12 x to the half is the same as root x minus the 12 from here plus the 3 x to the minus half is the same as 1 over root x. So this should be the solution for f primed. So if we go back to the screenshot, we also need to work out f double primed. 
So double prime means differentiate twice or we can differentiate f primed x again to work out f double primed x. So back to the paper and pen, we have our answer for f primed x in the form of ax to the power n. So I'm going to differentiate f primed this term again. So f double primed x. So when I differentiate the first term, multiply by the power, half times 12 is 6. And if I subtract 1 from the power, half minus 1 minus half. When I differentiate minus 12, it's 0. And when I differentiate this final term, multiply by the power, minus half times plus 3 is minus 3. So it's minus 3 over 2. So this is a 3 over 2. x to the power, subtracting 1 from the power, minus half, minus 1, minus 3 over 2. So this should be the solution for f double primed x. So I could rewrite this as 6, x to the minus half is 1 over root x, so 6 over root x in this case, minus the 3 over 2, x to the minus 3 over 2 is the same as 1 over the square root x cubed. So this should be the solution for f double prime to x. So if we go back to the screenshot, we need to work out the values of f prime 2 and f double primed 1. So back to the paper and pen. Now for f primed x, here is the solution. So let's use that solution for f primed 2. So to calculate f prime 2, we need to replace all of these x's here by 2's. So we're going to have as a result 12 into the square root x being replaced by 2 minus the 12 plus the 3 over root of x which is 2. So this should be the solution for f prime 2. So you can rationalize this term over here. So your answer is going to be 12 root 2 minus the 12 and if I rationalize by multiplying the top and the bottom by root 2, I'm going to have a plus 3 root 2 over 2. So let's simplify further. So 12 root 2 plus 3 root 2 over 2. So it is a 27 root 2 over 2. So I've added these two terms to give me this 27 root 2 over 2 minus the 12. So this should be the solution for f primed 2. So back to the screenshot, we also need to work out f double primed 1. So back to the paper and pen. To work out f double primed 1, we can use our answer for f double prime x and replace the x's by 1's. So in this case, f double primed 1 will be, if I replace the x's by 1's here, I'm going to have 6 over, so 6 over root x, which is 1, minus 3 over 2, into the root, x being 1 cubed. So if I continue from here, 6 over root 1 is 6, minus the 3 over 2, so this will simplify to 6 minus 3 over 2 is 9 over 2. So this should be the solution for f double prime 1. So that completes this example. That completes example number 2. And that sadly ends this video. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did enjoy the video, a like is very much appreciated. Do plenty of practice related problems. And I hope to see you again. Thank you.